is David Chance, and we're rough in. You're listening to, you know, I got soul.com. Hey, Dante. Hey, David. What's up, brother? How are you, man? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I apologize about getting on late here, man. No problem at all. I'm, 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 I was mentioning your publicist. I'm excited to speak to you guys, interview you guys for the first time. You know, we've interviewed so many R&B artists and supported so many over the years, including you guys. So it's great to, you know, finally talk to you guys for the first time. And, you know, we've always been fans of what you've been doing. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for for thinking of us, man, and, and loving the music, man. It, it means a lot. Absolutely. So... Just start out with this, you know, congratulations on the release of your guys' new album, Soul Brothers. You know, um, I know R&B fans were excited to have you guys back after not having, you know, new music for so many years from you guys. So um, just tell us a little bit about the project and the release of it. Awesome, man. This is David speaking. Uh, Dante, you want to go first on this one? Um, well, how you doing? This is Dante speaking. Um, this first pro this this upcoming project, this David album means a lot to us. Um, this is something that we we did entirely um, entirely rough end, so we really don't didn't have any outside influences on this album. So it's definitely I can say truly a David Brown album, which was which was our name before we had the name Rough Ends, you know. So to tie back into Soul Brothers is just everything coming back around full circle. Um, so this album is definitely dear to us, uh, dear to our, our uh, a lot of our true sound, a lot of our true creativity. Um, my brother David right here, I've always, I've always really pushed him to, to show more of his talents because he comes from a very talented musical family as well as I do, but his family is like, you know, I grew up being around him doing harmonies and whatever the case is and playing instruments and <laughs> all that crazy stuff like a, like, like a movie, you know? So, um, to make a long story short, um, so, uh, we really got a chance to do acoustic songs on his album where he's playing the guitar or, um, still staying true to a little bit of our hip hop edge. Um, from like no more shopping sprees with songs like um, don't leave or whatever the case is, but play it out, right? Play it out as well, but um, but still staying true to something we've always loved, which is uplift, up, uplifting women and doing positive music. So the album is rated P for positive, mm. um, as well as being certain that it's an album that we could play. In different audiences, whether it's my mother or it's my daughter, which we both have kids now. David has a 13 year old and I have an 11 year old. So it's like this album was created very purposeful. Thinking about, you know, the power, the power of having an audience that's going to listen to and be influenced by your music. So not to go on too much about how much the album means to us, you know, but, um, yeah. That's dope. And now, I guess what we, you know, we really want to know is what led to this point where you guys got back in the studio because, you know, it's like I mentioned, it's been so long since you had put out new music. And, you know, you guys had a really big impact on R&B in the early 2000s with, with both of the albums you put out. And, and R&B fans have been waiting. So what led to, the, led to you guys getting back together and deciding to do a new album? Well, you know, this is David speaking, man. You know... Baltimore, we're from the city of Baltimore and, uh, or Charm City as they say. But we say be more, you know what I mean? Hmm. And, um, a lot was actually happening in our city. I don't know if you remember, you know, um, Freddie Gray incident, yep. um, that happened here in Baltimore, which caused the uprising. So, you know, our city was in turmoil. I was actually working on a film project, a small independent film project. And, um, at the time, so I was, a waste part of when you know the riots was happening but my, all my sisters and my brothers a lot of them went down you know Pennsylvania Avenue where they burnt down the CVS and they were down there just helping you know um and just you know being a light in that, in that dark situation and you know with a lot of anger and um you know people are upset you know what I mean so um me and Dante 
you know, at the time we really wanted to be a part, man, and do things and do something, you know, to, to uh, I guess, play a role in, 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 in what was going on in our city. So, you know, we just connected one time. It was crazy how we connected. We connected just by mistake. I actually drove by him. And I didn't even realize it was him I was driving by and I stopped we stopped the car and um I got out and I just walked right up on him. And at the same time Dante is actually talking to someone in New York about me. Hmm. And um the person is saying on the phone that, you know, you guys should come back together, you should get the original member back. And it was just a weird, crazy like ordered steps kind of a situation that's really how we led back together how we reconnected but long story short our city you know was in turmoil and, and there's a lot of uh emotion so we wrote a song called time to change um just as our expression of what was going on and in, in the way you know we're not politicians on the way but we felt like you know we felt like we to a song and that is really the beginning of not only a new album, but it's actually the beginning of a friendship that, you know, was lost and destroyed, you know what I mean? Um, so we, we were brothers, man, and brothers for years, and, and um, music brought us back together, you know, time for change, so. Uh, That's pretty special. and. The thing that, that to me is most appealing about the Soul Brothers album is your guys' sound on the album really reminds me of that vintage rough end sound. And I think a lot of that's what's going to excite a lot of R&B fans about it as well. But specifically, what drew you back to tapping into your roots? I know a lot in these days it's very easy to kind of look for a trend to your sound, which a lot of R&B acts are doing. But I love the decision you guys want to kind of go for that, that classic sound that you guys have had. What made it the decision to go that route? I'll say really quickly and I'll give it over to Dante and, you know, definitely to her. But, you know, I'm sure, you know, you've heard and all of us have heard the conversations in social media. Someone posting something about the 90s R&B and this and the, that sound and what happened to r &B. Like all of these, I'm sure you've heard it. You know what I mean? I've heard those conversations. We heard them overseas and we right. in um, Australia as well. And uh, we, we wanted to really make an album that was specific to those people because we're independent. We didn't make an album for radio. Usually artists today is making an album because they're thinking about a single being played on the radio. We thought about all of those conversations that we saw online that we were actually a part of as well, of people talking about that classic sound is what I like to call it. And um, that was really... The, the, the forte of this project, I like the, the main, I would say, um, that was the emphasis of, of, of this album that we did, is to really emphasize that era of music and bring a certain sound of real singing, you know, melodies, you know, us just singing like it's our last song, you know what I mean? And bringing those old school R&B elements back to the mainframe. That's dope. And what was it like being back in the studio together, creating this album, you know, after so long? I mean, especially if you compare it to creating your first album back in 2000, what was it like being together again in, in, in the booth? Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, this is Dante speaking. Um, well, it's always a great feeling. It's like, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. You never lose certain things. Um, and at the same time, um, the evolution of music has came to a certain point where it's easier to record. It's not, it's not the same, um, major studio, uh, analog <laughs> recording. Like, you know, we, we've been in the game for a minute now, so it's like everything is digital now, you know, everything is more compact or whatever the case is. Um, but, just the feeling of, just the feeling of recording now with the purpose of doing a new project. The feeling, the feeling that, you know, to be back at, at, at that point is, was real nostalgic for us. You know, was real, um, it definitely 
was a learning process at the same time, you know, to get back to that point. But um, we both were doing different things still in music. You know, just we just hadn't come together to do a Ruffin's album. So, I mean, it's, it's all I can say is a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. Awesome. And speak about what your plans are now. Now the album's out, you know, the, I guess the, not only the work ahead promoting the album as, as independent artists, but what your plans are as far as, I think I heard you guys are working on putting a video out, you know, touring. What, what do you have in mind? David speaking, we, we're definitely going back on tour. We just was on a tour in Australia with Sean Paul, Kelly Rowland, Mario, Onifa, um, Craig David, Neo. Um, we're working on some other tours as well with some more from about Pierce from back in the 90s. And um, and really just writing again. There's a, we are writers and we are producers. Well, I'm a producer. And me and Dante is writing. So you're going to see a lot more writing on other projects, a lot of soundtracks and stuff like that from us as well. Um, but Rough Ends, you know, we are have evolved the sound, you know what I mean, to... Um, especially live, we, we got a live band now with us and uh, our horn section, you know, background singers. And so we really want our fans to see us in a different light, which they really never got a chance to see us like that. And, um, you know, really showcase uh, our fans, you know, in a different light, you know, when it comes to our live performance. So um, I got Dante added to that as well, man, if you don't want to add to that. Well, Hello. yeah. Um, definitely very excited about about uh, presenting this new album to our fans. Um, the certain elements that we're bringing that we never, I'm not going to say never really had the chance to, but we never really got around to just building on what David said to have the element of just horns. I've always been like a huge fan of like the whole James Brown, the whole Earth, Wind and Fire with the horns and just having a certain level and seeing a certain level of creativity in front of my eyes. Now you can hear it, hearing it is one thing, you know, everything is, everything is sampled and digital now, but to see it, to see it and actually feel it live for me is, is something really to look forward to. So um, I'm just excited about reconnecting with our fans and reconnecting with new fans and um, and basically taking our legacy to another height. Oh. Um, also, we, we, we definitely want to have like six videos for this album. So, um, you know, we, we got a team of uh, video directors, including myself, that we're working with. So we, we're going to really give our fans a lot more visuals. Um, and to support this album and just really catch up for being away for so long. You know, that's why there's 14 songs on there. So it's kind of like a double album, almost eight songs, you know, a piece. But um, we really want to give them something that they can eat on for a while. Um, and a lot more albums to come from, from our fans, you know, as well. So, and now one thing we, we love to do with the site, especially in these interviews, is kind of get the history. We love to preserve the history of R&B and, and share with our readers kind of where things started and just so we could have it all documented. So we wanted to ask you guys, do you remember originally getting signed to Epic back in the in the late 90s and how did you originally get discovered? Oh, wow. Uh, um, grinding process. You take me back to the ground process. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, consistency was one of the things, man. Right? We had on our side being around each other. We we started from talent shows, through the talent shows, through a, um, a, a guy, a friend of ours that gives talent shows in Boston, Anthony Jeter. We met um, Troy Patterson, who was a manager who's, who's still in the industry somewhere. Um, through Troy Patterson, we met uh, a writer, singer named Stephanie Cook. To Stephanie Cook, we met O.G. Pierce, who wrote This Is How We Do It, with Martel Jordan. We took, took us to L.A. for the first time, which was amazing in itself. 
he stayed at his house with the lemon tree in the backyard, making <laughs> lemonade every day, writing and, and, and producing music. Um, and from there, he basically set up a, a few interviews. And the second interview was Dave McPherson at uh, Sony Epic Records. Um, him and Ron Grant had heard the music. I think Ron Grant couldn't reach us, and somehow Dave McPherson, he sent the hounds, he, he, he sent them to find us, and they, they, they caught up with us, and we came to, to meet with him in New York. And um, he heard what we were doing, and heard our sound, and and basically told us, man, look, don't do all the interviews, man. I, <laughs> I, I want to sign y'all. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm fast forwarding through time, it ain't happened overnight. <laughs> but, um, but the process was definitely amazing, man, because when we came into music, it was just so so many amazing artists. It was so many that were that were right before us and happening at the time that we were happening. Um, it was just an amazing time in music. It was just, I mean, not not even knowing that it was coming into basically another era of music, kind of, you know, so to speak. But the time when we came in music, I feel like it was just the perfect time because it was like um, Destiny Child, 3LW, um, a lot of these females they had songs out like uh No 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 and No Scrubs and 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 <laughs> all these songs. So when we came out with no more shopping sprees, it was like it was just the perfect time. It was a perfect time for us and God is always good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, it's it's great to hear you guys you know, in such a great place right now, back together, recording new music, new albums out. But, um, you know, I was just really wondering, did, did you ever expect to be back at this place? I mean, you guys had, had two great albums, you know, then eventually split. David went on to release a couple of solo albums, and it wasn't, I, I don't feel like it was a short thing to R&B fans that you guys would ever put another album out. So, years ago, did you ever expect this to be the case where you, you, where you guys are now? Um, you mean as far as hadn't break broken up and, and, and was you know sh short lived career kind of thing? Well, more so like when you were you know when David was putting out the solo albums and and you guys had split and not recorded new music for a while. Did either either of you ever really you know believe that this was going to happen to the place you are in now, getting back together, putting out another album? I always felt like me being honest. At one point, I didn't. Um, because of where I was, you know, I was on a spiritual journey, you know, I started a family, I was really focused in on my spirituality, you know what I mean? And, um, and it's crazy, you know, the journey that I've been on, spiritual, and with everything I've learned has let me realize that you have to be a light out here where it's dark, you know? And it's been something I know that I've always had to get back to, but I just really didn't know how it would actually happen, but how things happened was just really nothing short of you know, all the steps, man. And, um, you know, me and Dante, man, we, this is, the core of our friends is really a brotherhood. You know what I mean? And our friendship and who we are as brothers to each other really comes across in our music, you know? And it's just real brother love. You know, I know his mother, his family, his sisters, his cousins, and you know, all my brothers and sisters, you know, we used to stay in each other's houses at one time growing up. So it comes a long way. And um, so, you know, the restoration of the group is really the restoration of a friendship, man, that's, that's you know, come back full circle. So, and with that friendship is, is music, you know, which is our, the thing that really speaks to our soul, man. Um, and Soul Brothers is, is really a representation of that, man. So. We we believe in miracles. We believe in in uh, in, a, in, a, in an awesome God, man. And we, um, I think we are now not just talking it, but really walking it when it comes to this project. Putting out a project that is clean. It's still something that you can have fun to. Still something you can fall in love to. Still something you could make love to as well. You know what I mean? Still something you can play at the wedding reception or the wedding itself. Um, and the music that really represents something that I'm, I'm positive enough to let my son hear or let uh, his daughter hear as well. So, um, and it's edifying to our people as well at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, so, 
we're proud of it, man. That's that's great, and that's that's all we had to ask. I just want to say, you know, thanks again for taking the time, and we're really g glad to have you guys back. This new album is just what we were hoping for from Rough Ends. You know that that organic sound, that the vintage Rough End sound, and I know R and B fans are are excited to have you back as well. So thank you for coming together and, and making this happen. Appreciate the love, my brother. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much.